knows everybody who works for her. Our voices are going to be heard because she, she will back us 100%. Linda's a proponent for change. She talks up the arts. A listener, someone who is paying attention to what's happening out there and wanting to do the very best, not for Linda, but for the college or for the university. College of Wilbur Washington Sciences is the heart and soul of the university, the biggest college. She's had a profound impact on the university in general. She does have an incredible memory. The college is enormous. It's complex. Uh, there are many moving parts and it's constantly changing. Linda manages to keep track of a phenomenal amount uh, of what's happening in the college. Higher education is changing, is moving forward, and I think that uh, some of the experiments that she has tried in her office are things that, uh, that higher education as a whole would, uh, would long to hear. She wasn't a huge football fan. Given the fact that she has a background with Penn State and Tennessee, I could fully understand that, but I've been told she's kind of uh, partial now to Hawkeye athletics. It was always her style that uh, really encouraged us to collaborate. If you could figure out how to pitch even the wildest idea, if it had if it had some value in it, she would listen. Linda's a pioneer in the field that I call my own, which is molecular evolution. It was great talking to a dean who I could jump right in and talk about my specific science. And not only that, she was just obviously a, a really interesting and, and nurturing person. During her tenure as dean, during the last 15 years, uh, we have hired uh, more than half of the current faculty in, in the college. The faculty have really appreciated over the years that she attends things uh, regularly, and pretty unusual from what I hear about deans of large colleges at other schools that often aren't paying a whole lot of attention to what's going on in the arts. I would had a meeting with Linda for the first time, and I was just shaking, I didn't know really what was gonna happen. We walked into her room and knocked on the door, and, and she said, oh, come in, it's, it's nice to meet you, you know, sit, sit down any, anywhere you like. And I, I said, oh, does it matter where I sit? And I pull out a chair, and she says, not at all, but not that chair, that's my chair. And so immediately I said, oh no, I've, I've done something wrong. And so she, she sits down and she, she kind of laughed and then I was ready to kind of make some jokes, have some, some banter. And she sat down, she looked at me and I'd been there maybe for a month, maybe, maybe three weeks. And she said, so what have you done since you've been here? One of the things that Linda's done again and again, and this is the whole college, is to encourage diversity. Diversity among the student body, diversity among the faculty and the staff. We are up to 41% uh, of female faculty in the college. We are up to 19% minorities. Linda really has served as a mentor and role model for many women in the college, from staff to faculty to people like me who uh, have done a lot of administration since she's come here. I think Linda's done a great job over the years of bringing in people, both faculty members, but also aspiring young administrators, or maybe not so young administrators, who come in and do a terrific job. The physical facilities, teaching laboratories, research laboratories, an environment for collaborative research and student learning, increased enormously under her time here and uh, those facilities will stand forever. I think one of the greatest tributes to an administrator's career is being able to really work and pull all of the different resources together for a new facility. Linda was instrumental in helping us to create a beautiful addition to the Dye House where our program is currently located. The largest step that Dean Maxson took in, in building the chemistry department was in building the chemistry building or rebuilding the chemistry building. Uh, because as we renovated the building, what we discovered is that it became easier to recruit faculty. We weren't asking them to go into archaic facilities. It became easier to recruit the graduate students that we wanted. It became a more popular major. Uh, we doubled the number of chemistry majors during that period of the renovation. The impact of the Adler Journalism and Mass Communication Building on our school is not calculable. You see it when Prospective students and their parents walk in the building and they look around, they say, wow. They see the facilities, they see the beautiful architecture, they realize they're at a modern school of communication on a modern campus. I think it commits a lot of them to coming to Iowa. In 2001, the college was preparing to celebrate its centennial. Linda thought that that was an appropriate time to recognize the breadth and diversity of the college in its name. The name liberal arts 
had become not very well understood and the fact that he actually voted on the name liberal arts and sciences. We have mathematical sciences, we have many social sciences units, and so the, the pairing of arts and sciences really represents how broad and diverse our college is. What she said was, as a result of our new writing certificate, we truly now are the writing university because any undergraduate student can now pursue a credential in writing. If we think about, for example, the Division of World Languages, Literatures, and Cultures at the University of Iowa, Linda is all about creativity. She's all about putting people together, having them think through problems, and then creating something new and creating something bold. Well, my recollection is she really created the advisory board for the College of Liberal Arts, at least uh, um, in its current form, uh, didn't exist before she came. She, of course, famously created a division of performing arts. Well, it was Linda's idea. Uh, theater, dance, and music were all separate units, and uh, early in her uh, career here, she called the DEOs together. In fact, we went over to her house for dinner, and uh, she talked to us about coming together as a, as a single uh, division. We all thought it was a good idea. Then we went back to our respective units, talked to our faculties, and there was enough uncertainty about it that uh, we had to return to Linda and say, we're not sure. She did exactly the right thing. She backed off, sweetened the pot a little bit, gave us time to think about it. Our faculty changed their mind, came back to Linda with a proposal, which she totally accepted, and more. She's a real proponent of recognizing staff for doing a good job without going in there and micromanaging, hey staff, come forward, tell me what you need, and I'll be happy to support it. She attends readings, she goes to concerts, will even read the novels of our creative writers. This is something that deans normally don't have time to do, but she makes time. There's also a, a humane aspect to Linda Maxson that is very powerful. I have uh, received a lot of comments from the staff to the uh, extent of how they feel that uh, Dean Maxson really has contributed to their well-being. I think she's a good teacher herself. I've seen her lecture. You can see that she's passionate about it and wants to translate that to whoever's uh, listening. I think she carries that passion across the whole college. There's a saying among the DEOs in the college, Linda knows all. I, I've never met in my 25 years in this business somebody who has such an encyclopedic knowledge of everyone who works for them, what they're doing, what their aspirations are, and how she can help them succeed. My first impression is, is when she came to a faculty meeting in the Department of Chemistry early into her tenure and uh, as dean, and she at that time told us how important chemistry was to the college, the centrality of its role, and how she was determined to help the department improve. I'd heard that from other administrators before, but Dean Maxson actually meant it, and she did indeed follow through. I was still a graduate student, and I had a chance to meet her and was just in awe of the work that she was doing and the kinds of cutting edge research that she was involved in at that time. Dean Maxson has really been one of the deans who has made a remarkable impact on the numbers of opportunities available at the university as a result of philanthropy. And to see really the strong impact of doubling that productivity during her tenure, it's a great tribute to someone who is able to administer such a large and complex college. She has been supportive of not only me, but of the program, the Writers Workshop. Um, she's managed to keep us strong and enthused, and, and she's helped us feel that the university supports us as an institution for the last 15 years. I just want to say thanks to Linda for her great service and the impact that she's had. Since the time I've been in the office, the absolute mantra has been student success. It has been the idea that we care about our students, not just vocationally, not about just finding jobs, but we care about them on the level of them living meaningful lives and being happy. Education is more about just a job, and Dean Maxson has really allowed us to, uh, to set the tone and explore those type of topics.
Anyone who knows Linda knows that she's very fond of frogs. 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 <laughs> Frogs, 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 frogs. Linda loves frogs. I've never seen Linda without her frog jewelry on. We have a lot of fun with her love of frogs. You find yourself walking down a trail and you heard a frog croaking. First thing that pops into your mind is Linda and her frog. Well, uh, the, the way Linda and I originally met was because of frogs. Oh man, I don't know anything about the frog obsession. I thought that that was a joke when you said we're gonna talk about frogs. If you go to her office, you'll find uh, various uh, statues and, and pictures and uh, memorabilia of all descriptions representing frogs. In the spring of 1997, there were six candidates for the deanship, one of whom, of course, was Linda. The dean's office staff met with all the dean's candidates that spring, and when we were referring to Linda, we would call her the frog lady to distinguish her from the other candidates. She was a pioneer on using molecular sequences to understand processes of evolution and also to understand how molecular sequences evolve themselves. We'll always think of her as the individual who really made tremendous breakthroughs in terms of understanding the evolutionary biology of, of amphibians and frogs in particular. I was at a DEO meeting and we looked at the dean who most of the time wears a frog pin, a lapel, or brooch, or whatever you want to call it, to meetings. And the colleague looked over at me and said, oh my goodness. I said, what's the problem? She said, well, Linda has on her big frog today, so we're, we're in for it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we, uh, we, we love the frogs, and we love her for her frogs, and uh, it's, it's just a wonderful experience uh, working with her.